So uh, I'm in a villa. I'm, I'm a hostage and uh, this villa has been converted into a jail. All the windows are barred shut. I can't open any window. For three years, the world has heard nothing from Princess Latifa, the missing daughter of one of the world's richest men, Dubai's billionaire ruler, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. But now, you can hear Princess Latifa's story in her own words. I'm doing this video from a bathroom because uh, it's the only room with the door I can lock. In these video messages, Princess Latifa says she is being held against her will in a royal villa in Dubai. And the door to my room, I put, because um, I can't lock the door to my room, there's no key. I put uh, like a bottle and some boxes underneath, so if somebody opens the handle, it will make a loud, loud sound, so it will be like an alarm, so I stopped talking. Nine months ago, my secret communication with the princess stopped. We don't know why or where she is now. Latifa's father is the ruler of Dubai and the prime minister of the United Arab Emirates. The sheikh is a powerful and influential man with horse racing and property assets in the UK. He's regularly seen alongside heads of state, including the queen. But there's another side allegations that have come from a number of members of his family. Two ex-wives claim he abused them, as have Latifa and one of her sisters. The Sheikh denies all of this. From the outside, Sheikha Latifa appeared to live a life of luxury. She had her horses, a love of animals, a passion for skydiving, but Replying to questions Sky News sent to her in the spring and summer of 2019, she tells of a different reality. I'm being punished and uh, I don't know what can happen to me and how long this will last and if they decide to release me, like how my life will be, but um, I'm not safe at all. This story starts back in 2018, when Latifa first went public in a YouTube post. And I'm making this video because it could be the last video I make. Yeah. She says she was desperate for her freedom. So that year in February, she tried to escape. Her best friend, Tina Yauhiainen, went with her. I believe that Latifa has wanted to be free all her life. And um, I'm not satisfied until Latifa is allowed to travel to a country of her choice and, um, and, and get the freedom that she's always wanted. They made plans and practiced, with Latifa trying different techniques to navigate water in the palace pool. Then, with the plans in place, they drove from downtown Dubai, across the border, into Oman. From Muscat, they took a small boat then jet skis to a waiting yacht, and they set sail for Goa. But just miles from the coast of India, and what they believed was safety, armed Indian commandos boarded. You know, I was, I was prepared for anything. You know, I, I'm used to much worse and I'm prepared for anything. I, I, I was prepared to even lose my life for freedom. But I wasn't prepared to put my best friend in that situation or to see her get hurt. That was the hardest thing. Latifa and those helping her were forcibly taken back to the United Arab Emirates. I was holding onto the yacht, like with my hands, the side of the ropes on the side of the yacht, I was holding onto it and they, they were pulling me off. I was fighting as hard as I could. I was wearing flip-flops and my flip-flops came off, so I was barefoot. Uh, I didn't have any weapons, I was tied. I was up against a lot of people with weapons, you know, like it wasn't easy. In these clips, recorded on a smartphone that was smuggled to her, Sheikha Latifa says she was beaten and injected with a substance she believes was a tranquilizer. The one who was sitting on my stomach, he grabs my chest and he says to me, shut up, shut up. So I got really, really angry and I was hitting him with my hands and screaming at him to get off me. And I was like so, so angry and I just kept fighting with him really, really hard. And uh, nobody cared, but then eventually because uh, like I was really, 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 really like struggling a lot. 
the other Emirati guy told him, uh, like, get off her. And then he sat on me. And he was trying to help the other guy tie up my legs, but I was fighting. And uh, this guy came with a small uh, pouch, like a camouflage pouch. And uh, he took out the needle and he injected me in my arm. And I was, like, fighting. I was saying, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. When I woke up, the private jet had already landed in Dubai. And uh, one of the policewomen, she was, like, I woke up and I, she was braiding my hair while I was asleep. And uh, I noticed that my hands were like really bruised and swollen, especially my left hand, because the zip ties were still on me. And I was still on the stretcher, still tied completely to the stretcher. She says she was questioned and taken to a cell in Al Awir jail on the outskirts of Dubai before she was moved to the guarded villa. The cell was in uh, section 13 in Al Awir jail. And I was there um, from my kidnap day until May 27, uh, 2018. So approximately three months I was in Al Awir jail, in a jail cell. For quite some time I was sleep deprived and I wouldn't really sleep properly. I would just sometimes pass out from exhaustion. Uh, it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't a good situation. And uh, yeah, the bathroom had no door. And I think it's just another way like to humiliate you, you know? This is very much Latifa's account. Her father has a very different view. He says Latifa was tricked into escaping by criminals who wanted money and that returning her to Dubai was a rescue mission. Pictures were released nine months after the escape, showing the princess with former UN human rights chief, Mary Robinson, who says she was duped into taking part in the photos. The Sheikh says the princess is safe and well and that they want to maintain her privacy. So, which version should we believe? Many of the details from Latifa's account have been accepted by a senior British judge. Now, a British judge has found that the ruler of Dubai is responsible for the kidnapping and detention of two of his daughters. Latifa's story was brought up during a high court case between the Sheikh and his now former wife, Princess Haya bint al Hussein. In that case, the judge accepted that the Sheikh had been responsible for the forcible kidnapping and detention of Latifa. The judge accepted the actions were undertaken upon the instructions of the father and carried out by agents acting on his behalf. He accepted eyewitness testimony from Princess Haya, who told the court Latifa was held against her will. She was locked in a house, guarded from the outside and from the inside. In response to the court case, the Sheikh said, As a head of government, I was not able to participate in the court's fact-finding process. This has resulted in the release of a fast-finding judgment, which inevitably tells only one side of the story. Her friends did not hear from Latifa after the escape, until around a year later, a message reached Tina, who had been on the boat with the princess. When I got the first message uh, from Latifa, I was, I couldn't believe it was happening. I was so emotional. I, I couldn't sleep for a couple of nights um, because there was this time frame that I was having a hard time contacting her. It's, it's very hard to imagine how it must be like to be in prison for, uh, for three years already. Another friend, David Haig, who was also charged and detained in the UAE over fraud allegations, says he is hoping the videos will encourage the UN and others to act. We want politicians and former politicians and world leaders and you know celebrities and so-called influence, all the people that go to Dubai and the UAE and promote that country to wake up and see what the reality is. This is a country that is literally, I mean, people will be on those beaches in Dubai a few hundred metres away from where Latifa is, is essentially in solitary confinement, a hostage. We agreed to run these videos when Latifa herself wanted them to be made public. But we have not heard from her for nine months. Her video messages have now been passed by her friends to the United Nations. So we have made the decision to air them. As for where Latifa is now, that is unknown. Representatives of the Sheikh did not respond to requests for comment.